Hey everyone, welcome to an overview of the Dawning 2019. This year's Dawning is very similar to last year's, so similar in fact that if you completed all of the stuff from that previous event, you'll have most of the things done already. Which can be good or bad depending on how much you wanted to grind. In this video, I'm going to go over the new and old recipes, ingredients, how to farm Essence of Dawning, and how to get the new SMG Cold Front, last year's LMG Avalanche, and what perks you can expect to roll on them. Lastly, I'll just throw some extra tips your way to close out the video. When you first land in the tower, you'll visit Eva Levante, who has seemingly made a power move over Tess, and she'll give you her new and improved Holiday Oven 2.0. If you preview the oven, you'll see three slots for ingredients on the top row. The first is comprised of uncommon items, each one corresponds with a different alien race. Defeating that specific enemy type has a chance to drop one of these uncommon ingredients. Vex Milk from Vex, Ether Cane from Fallen, Cabal Oil from Cabal, Chitin Powder from Hive, Taken Butter from Taken, and Dark Ether Cane from Scorn. Nothing too complicated there. The second slot gets a little more cryptic though. Each of these rare ingredients drops from doing something specific. For example, Delicious Explosion has a chance to drop from defeating enemies with grenades, grenade launchers, or rocket launchers. For something like the ingredient Impossible Heat, that has a chance to drop when defeating enemies with solar damage. Because this is supposed to be treated as a trial and error thing, unless you spend the time to mix and match all of the ingredients yourself, you're going to want to use this cheat sheet I put together. It lists all of the old and the new ingredients and how to get them. The final slot is for Essence of Dawning. This ingredient drops from pretty much every activity in the entire game. You'll get it from strikes, from black armory forges, from public events, you know, really anything. So before you actually sit down and farm essence, just do all of your powerful challenges and play the activities you were normally going to play for the week, and you'll get plenty of essence for doing other stuff. But if you're just looking for the fastest way to farm this, at the time of making this video there are three ways I plan on using. The first two are the more legit ways, and the third is an exploit. The first way is by running the game mode Scorched, which is currently live in the Crucible. This mode lasts no longer than just a few minutes and you'll earn 11 to 15 Essence of Dawning per match. Because the Dawning lasts multiple weeks, this mode is probably going to change next reset, so keep an eye out for the game mode Mayhem, because if that goes live, that is another really quick mode to farm Essence from. Actually, now that I think about it, I should also mention running the Lake of Shadows strike from the EDZ director is extremely fast, like 3 to 5 minutes per strike. The second way to farm essence extremely efficiently is by double dipping and triple dipping, and if you're the luckiest person on planet Earth, maybe even quadruple dipping public events. I'm sure you've heard of this method before, but if not, the first step is to find public events that happen really close to a fast travel location. Things like Artifacts Edge and Nessus, Winding Cove in the EDZ, or the easiest place of all, any of the landing zones on Titan. Your goal is to burn through the public event as quick as possible, because sadly heroic events don't give any more than normal ones for some reason. Yes, this is basically going against everything everyone has ever told you about public events, so if you don't want to annoy people, then just do the heroic version. Once the event ends and the public event banner disappears from your screen, immediately fast travel back to the spot closest to you, and you'll have a chance to join a different instance of the same public event. If you don't join another event immediately, try just a few more times because there's a chance that you can still find one. The faster you complete the event, the better your chances of finding another one. Each public event completion awards 5 essence, which isn't a lot, but if you manage to hit one event like 3 times in a row, you'll be able to build up that essence pretty quickly. And the last way is an old method that's been exploited for multiple different reasons, first for lore, then for materials, but Despite patching both of those things, you can still use the Black Armory Forges to AFK farm for Essence of Dawning. Just like the last few times, all you have to do is lower your power level down as low as it can go, preferably below 700 since you don't want to be matched with any new players trying to do these forges legit. Now just load into the forge and you'll be matched with other under light players doing the same exploit, and you'll generate 2 Essence per failure of the activity which is definitely not a lot, but you can leave this going for as long as you want, when you're sleeping, when you're at work, it doesn't matter and you won't be kicked at all. This is the easiest way to generate Essence of Dawning without doing any work. Now if you've acquired enough Essence and the necessary ingredients, you can start baking different combinations that result in desserts that can be given to all of the different vendors. 
but each cookie requires a different combination, so you're going to want to use this graphic to help you make all of them. This specific graphic is from last year, but all the combinations are the same. Any of these cheat sheets I'm showing you by the way can be found in the description. On top of the old ones shown here, there were also 7 new combinations added for the new vendors that we've had in the last year. For these new combinations I went ahead and put together my own graphic and tried to keep it looking similar to the first one made by Scooby DZ last year. This should help you quickly knock out any of the recipes that you're missing. You'll have to bake and give desserts to Brother Vance on Mercury, Saint-14 in the Tower Hangar whenever he decides to show up, the Statue of Callus in the Tribute Hall, Benedict-99 in the Tower Annex, Ada-1 in the Tower Annex, Eris Morn on the Moon, and finally Riven in the Last Wish Raid. Yeah, no, you heard that right, you gotta give a treat to Riven. Thankfully, this can be done completely solo using the Wall of Wishes feature in the Last Wish Raid. It allows you to teleport directly to Riven and present her with her thousand layer cookie. If you already know how to use the Wall of Wishes, skip to the time on the screen to see how you can give her that dessert. If you don't, here's how to get to her checkpoint. If you own the Forsaken DLC, you'll have access to the Last Wish Raid, which you can load up all by yourself. Run forwards until you hear the dialogue and then the secret passage will open up. Then just follow this path that I'm taking to get to the Wall of Wishes. Once you're at the wall, this is the combination that you need to enter. You can enter it by shooting each plate on the wall in any order you want, and cycling through the symbols until you appear at the ones in the picture. Make sure you're not using any weapons with ricochet rounds or explosive rounds, or else it's going to mess up your pattern. When you've entered the full combination, step on the plate and you'll be teleported to Riven. After spawning in the Riven checkpoint, step on any of the glowing plates on the floor to descend into her chamber. Once you float all the way to the bottom, you should find a little tiny snow globe on the ground. You can present the cookie to her here, and you'll get the triumph. Crafting all of the dessert combinations is going to allow you to masterwork your oven, which reduces the amount of essence you need for each cookie from 15 to 10. Yeah, that's, that's it. Upon starting the event, you're told to bake a cookie for Zavala, and he'll give you a dawning package. Upon starting the event, you're told to bake a cookie for Zavala, and he'll give you a dawning package. When you open this, you're going to get either a cold front SMG or the avalanche light machine gun. Not sure if it's just a 50-50 chance or if you're more likely to get the SMG if you already have the light machine gun. But to get more of these, you're going to need to get back to baking more treats. Each vendor has the potential to give out rare and legendary gear from their normal rewards when you turn in a treat, but you also have a chance to get the dawning gift packages. When handing in a treat to a vendor, you have a chance to get a consumable called Gift in Return. These can drop a variety of things from destination materials to cores and prisms, and they also have a chance to drop the new weapons. So basically, you just need to keep baking and visiting vendors and trying for these weapons. I do wish there was a more reliable way to actually farm for them. Some kind of weapon frame would be nice. Looking at the rolls for the weapons, the Kinetic SMG Cold Front has a decent selection of perks. For PvP, you're definitely going to want to try and scoop up that Kill Clip and Feeding Frenzy or Kill Clip and Zen Moment roll. Pair that with Accurized Rounds for PvP, and this thing can cover much greater distances. For PvE, that roll also works, but I think the Osmosis and Feeding Frenzy pairing is going to be something I'll be chasing. For Avalanche, here's what we're looking at. Of all the perks here, the Rampage and Feeding Frenzy roll is about the best thing you could ask for on a light machine gun, and if you don't have one already, try and get this. If you can get it to roll with ricochet rounds or extended mag, then that's even better. As for the rest of the event, here's some things you should know. 
The dawning bounties reward double XP, so if you're looking to level up your season pass quicker, or even just your artifact for those bonus power levels, make sure to do as many of these as you can over the next few weeks. And if you're in need of bright dust, the weekly bounties give 200 bright dust each, and the repeatable bounties give 10 each. So do them on all your characters, or don't, that's fine. If you acquired last year's Dawning Sparrow, the perks on it are now active again. The quest lines for upgrading the old one and the new Sparrow are painfully simple, so I'm not going to bother going over it. Same goes for all of the Triumphs. If any of them are hidden, you can check out what they are using the site Braytech.org in the description. That's really all you need to know about this year's Dawning event. I felt like I did a pretty good job covering last year's event, so there wasn't too much more I could add this time. Thank you very much for watching everyone and enjoy the dawning.